So we watched that process. Now, I was born in Texas, and uh, I, <laughs> are you a Texan? No wonder I like you, that's so good. And so I was born in Texas, and I remember lying on the ground and seeing airplanes, you know, go over, and I said, someday I will be on an airplane. Now I practically live on them. But I think that was part of the process. Everybody say process. Then I, I liked uh, foreign foods, but I, I really liked foreign languages. So when I was in sixth grade, I began to take Latin and Spanish and French, and I really liked that. Now that was process. Everybody say process. And so I went to a university. I, I became a foreign language teacher. Everyone say process. So all of this was process. And folks, if you'll be sensitive and listen to God, you'll see that things that you like, things that you do well in, are part of your process. And of course, Psalm 139 really tells that. He says he knows when we sit down and when we get up. I think, who cares? God cares. He likes all the processes of your life, and really, he is in them. And the more we recognize him and flow in process, the better it gets. So I took foreign languages. I became a foreign language teacher. And then I met my husband, and uh, there was something going on with my husband. He had gotten spirit-filled. Now, we were Methodists, born again, but oh, we didn't pray in tongues. Oh, those are Pentecostals. You know, that, and this is terrible. But we said, that's the poor, ignorant, white trash. <laughs> now, I'm the poor, ignorant, white trash. I speak in tongues a lot. And so, you know, I met him, and so he was going to a Pentecostal church. He had gotten spirit-filled. So the only, and I liked him. I was teaching school, and I liked him, except all he did was go to church. So he would take me to church or take me to dinner, but come on. And then <laughs> I fell in love with him, and so we were engaged. Now, this is part of process, so I'm just telling you process. We were engaged, and, uh, you know, I wasn't very spiritual. I was born again. And I remember he loved to come to our house to have dinner because my mother is a really good cook. So one night I had called him and he said, no, I will come after dinner. So I said, why didn't you come for dinner? He said, I'm fasting. I said, who are you fasting for? He said, you. I said, I'm saved. I was very, he said, but you're not committed. And he said, Marilyn, I serve the devil with all my heart. Now I'm gonna serve God with all my heart and I'm not going to marry a half-hearted woman. <laughs> Process. So, you know, I'm quite upset about this. I'm not sleeping well. And uh, I was awake, and when you teach junior high, you need to get your sleep. They're, they're challenging. And so one night, God dealt with me and said, uh, he awakened me in the night, and he said, you know, I have something very wonderful for you. He said, I have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But he said, uh, you're not interested, you know. But he said, uh, if you turn me down, he said, I'll tell you what you'll do. You'll never marry Wallace Hickey. He said, you'll move to California. You'll get your master's. You'll teach school. You'll have a good life. You'll die and go to heaven but I have something so wonderful for you, you cannot imagine. And so for three nights I had this, and the third night I said, Lord, if I never marry Wallace Hickey, I want everything you have for me. Everybody say process. Now stand up. You said, is this an exercise class? Yes, it is. Put your hand on your heart. Say, God, I want everything you have for me in Jesus name everything I want the process I'm not gonna jump out I'll just jump in more amen
You can be seated. Now, see, I think you're being here in this conference as part of the process, a big time part of the process. So I got spirit filled. We married. You know, I'm teaching school. I'm very happy. And then my husband started to fast. He said, I just feel like I'm missing God. I said, how could you be? We teach Sunday school. We go to church three times a week. You know, he said, I know, but I just feel like I'm missing God. And so in this timing, uh, we heard William Branham. Now, you probably don't know that name, but he was a very unusual ministry back then. And so we went to a meeting with William Branham, and uh, he prophesied over us. In fact, he prophesied mostly over me. He called me up on the platform. Now, let me tell you something. I'm standing here, he's standing here, and it was like a wheel within a wheel between us. You know, like Ezekiel, the wheel within, and I could hear it whirring. It was going shh, shh, shh. And he said to me, uh, you are not from here. You're from Denver, Colorado. You're from a mountainous area. You never told him what was wrong with you. He told you. And so he said, and you can't have a child. Go home and receive your baby. And that wheel within a wheel came into my feet. Now, you, you say, did you get pregnant right away? No, I didn't. And so... You know, it, we were married another seven years, and I went to a doctor because I thought maybe I was pregnant. So I went to this doctor, and he said to me, you're not pregnant, you're going through the change. Well, I went home, I had some more changes, and I had Sarah, and you see her with me on television. So the supernatural power of God, the process of it is awesome. Be careful. Be sensitive with it. Listen to God. Have a hearing ear. Have a seeing eye. And so you make a mistake, just hang in. So look at someone and say, honey, you know how to hang in. <laughs> right? So then something happened that was very unique in the process. Um, I, I just felt that God wanted us to do something more, and Wally did too. And uh, we went to a meeting with Daisy and T.L. Osborne. Now, I don't think you'd know them. They're way back in my time. But they were uh, foreign evangelists. I mean, they really went to the nations and took the gospel. And so I wanted to meet them. Now, this is real carnal, because we sold $1,000 in their ministry. So I thought, oh, they live in Tulsa. I need to meet these people. I've given a lot of money to them. You say, ugly. You can say it. It's okay. <laughs> say it again. So I went to Tulsa, and uh, I wanted to take them to lunch. So I invited them to lunch, and Daisy said to me, uh, you're going to go to leaders of nations. You're going to be a world evangelist. And I thought, Daisy and crazy rhyme. <laughs> How could that be? And that's exactly what's happened to me. And recently I read one of their books, and they went, they had crusades in 53 countries, and they're the same countries I've had them in. God is so cool, and he has a process. Everybody say process. So don't jump out while you're walking through it because it's difficult. Now, when I was 45, I fasted and prayed because I felt like I'm a pastor's wife. I love what I do, but am I in the will of God? Am I doing what God wants? And so I went on a fast just for one day, and God spoke to me and said, I've called you to cover the earth with the word. Now, how do you do that? And this is what I love about God. He'll give you the ultimate goal, but he also gives you the how-to to reach it. Now, put your hand on your heart. Say, God will give me the how-to 
for my process. Amen. Amen. So, you know, how, how would I do that? So in this timing, I thought, you know, maybe television could be a way. Well, television, hardly anybody was on, or Roberts was on on Sunday mornings. Catherine Kuhlman had a, a you know, a special uh, meeting on it. And so I went to our ABC station and asked them, told them I'd like to buy time on Sunday mornings. And they said to me, I met with their board, they said, you don't look like television material. No. Now stay in the process when you get no's. Put your hand on your heart again. Say, stay, stay. in the process when they say no. You know, because this is supernatural. So these men said, you're not television material. You know, you would never make it. And you know, these are all unsaved men. And one man said, well, I think we should try her. I think she'll pay her a bill. Now, I'm trying to think how long ago that was. That was 47 years ago. None of them are on television. I still am. Hey, we are supernatural if we stay in our process. That's the big key. It is so key, and everyone has a supernatural call. If you don't believe it, look at Psalm 139. If he knows when you sit down and get up, honey, he's got something good for you. Right? And so in this timing, <laughs> you know, uh, I began to have a heart for nations. And I'll tell you how it started, the process of it. Uh, I met Frida Lindsay. She, had, she, start, she and her husband started Christ for the Nations. And she said to me, I went to speak down there. She said to me, um, you need to pray for all the nations in the world every day. I thought, thanks a lot. You think I have a really good prayer life. And so I said, Frida, how do you do that? She said, I memorize them by continent. And she said, I said, how long does it take? Well, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes. So I got a map and memorized the nations of the world every day. Now, listen to me closely. In that timing, I had a warm heart for Muslim nations, never thinking of going, just thinking of that. So, you know, that I'm praying for nations. Now, all of this is process. You know, I took foreign languages. I was a foreign language teacher. You know, I met Daisy, who rhymes with crazy, and <laughs> got that prophecy. And then I get this warm feeling for Muslim nations. So in 1989, and I'm going to show you a video in a few minutes. In 1989, that seemed to be a big breakthrough year for me. You know, I went to Pakistan and had a healing meeting. A man came in our city, a pastor there, a Pentecostal pastor, and he said, uh, you know, if you would be willing, I could help you have a healing meeting in Pakistan. And so I was willing. He said, now don't back out. Most Americans get scared and back out. I said, I won't back out, I'll come. This was in 89. So I went, now remember, Muslims don't believe in women, right? I mean, women aren't their favorite, right? But if you're in process, you're in miracles. Process makes you miraculous. So I went, and I went to Lahore, Pakistan, and uh, you know, I advertised it, I covered my head, I did all the things you're supposed to do. And I remember, I had 4,000 people the first night. And we had all kinds of healings and miracles and people delivered, a lot of satanic things. And by the fourth night, I had over 20,000. I was hooked. J.B. Brown, do you know who he is? He's the one who's the sports announcer. J.B. Brown said CBS would like to go with you to Pakistan 
and put it on television. Oh my goodness. Now, but it didn't start that way. It started with just being obedient and one little thing. I remember when I first started to preach, uh, there was a man, uh, an evangelist that we just loved, and he said to me, of all the pastor's wives I know, you're the biggest example of a failure. Thanks a lot. That's really encouraging. I said, why do you think I'm a failure? He said, because you don't act like a pastor's wife. All you do are those silly little home Bible studies. But I wanted to reach the lost. And God said, if you want the lost, you'll have to go to where they are. And it's those Bible studies, I had 24 of them at one time, that put me on radio and then put me on television. Process, process. So stand up. Put your hand on your heart. Say, this conference is a big part of my process. In Jesus' name, the best is ahead and the worst is behind. Amen! You can be seated. Process. Now, on that platform, you saw an imam he was the one who had kind of the furry hat on. That imam is not a Christian, but he's a friend. And I have known him probably 10 or 11 years. So the last time I was there, he said, uh, would you like to have a healing meeting in Saudi Arabia? I said, well, is the cat Pope a Catholic? <laughs> oh, of course I would. So he said, my best friend is the head imam in Saudi Arabia, and we're going there to have a healing meeting, and now CBS wants to go with us. <laughs> Folks, the process of God. And you know, when I started, I had a lot of discouraging words, you know. For one thing, women didn't speak. You know, and God called me, and I, and I said to him, women don't speak. He said, I'll never be your problem. He said, that'll be my problem. Your problem will be your faith. And folks, stay in faith. Stay in the process because God has miraculous things for us. We're the miracle workers on this earth. Isn't that right? Say, I'm a miracle worker. Put your hand out. Say, there's healing and miracles in my hands. Amen. 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 